Okay, let's start with bar models. I really can't do uh, a big lesson on them because they're kind of complex. Um, but basically, to lay it out for you in a simple way as I can, please reference your notes on this because it is kind of complex and there's a lot of detail to it. You've got shells of electrons and then they go two for your first shell and as you go out, I'm going to draw this the other way, as you go out you've got two, eight, eight, I think, what is it, sixteen, should have looked this up first, sixteen, sixteen, thirty-two, I don't know, something like that, uh, maybe not correct, really all you have to focus on is this, they don't go much higher than that for bore models, because otherwise they'd be really hard to draw. So let's look at chlorine. Chlorine's atomic number 17, and Bohr models, it's key to have your data table with your periodic table with you. Actually, the whole exam, it's key to have your data table with your all your different tables. Uh, excuse me. So, chlorine, you've got a 17, so it's going to have 17 electrons. So just take your rings, let's say this one's 16, or maybe it's 18. I think it's 18. Whatever, we're not going to use it. Um, and so you've got your first ring, and I'm going to draw really ugly rings because I always sucked at more models. Two little electrons are going to be hanging out. They're going to be paired. So that's two. Knock that out of the way. So now there's 15 to go. Another ring. Uh, please excuse this. So two are going to be paired. Two are going to be paired. How many do we have so far? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Another ring. Eeks. That's so gross. 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17. There we go. So that's our really hideous Bohr model with the ugliest rings ever. But, you know, it's, it's there. It's a Bohr model. So you now know how many rings are on your outside. Okay? I mean, how many electrons are on your outer ring. That's the key thing to take away from Bohr models. That's the most important part. Is just you look at this, you go, okay, well, it's got seven electrons on the outside ring here. This is just getting uglier by the minute. I apologize. Reference to Miss Mann's notes or like the ones you drew, not mine, please. Uh, but yeah, you're basically just looking seven outer electrons. That means that to be happy, to be an, to act like a noble gas, it just needs, it wants this one more. Okay, it wants one more to go there, but it can't have it unless it reacts with something. Okay, so try to start to think using Bohr models and say, okay, well if Chlorine's going to pair up with something. What does it need to react and pair up and be happy? Okay? For chlorine, for example, it would be 1. For, uh, let's look at maybe calcium, right? Calcium has how many on the outside ring? It has 2 plus, so 2 to give away. Um, and so calcium would look like, I don't know, rings, 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 right? With the little 2 on the outside. Those want to, uh, they wouldn't be paired. Uh, those want to pop off and go somewhere else so that it can be happy, so it can lose this ring. Don't mind this being messy. It can lose this ring and just have that inner ring instead. I'm sorry, this is actually horrifying. Just don't mind it. Get the ideas. Listen to me rather than re uh, do as I say, not as I do. How about that? But yeah, basically just think about the outer shell, how many are either going to be given off or going to be taken on for example. I don't know. It's kind of hard to explain, but I hope you get it. Sulfur, right, is a 2 minus combining capacity. That means it can take 2 on. So S2 minus, that means it wants 2. And then, you know, uh, yeah, calcium or magnesium 2 plus, that means it wants to give away 2 electrons. It's, it's kind of, Bohr models are a fundamental visual idea so that you can understand what they want to do to become kind of neutral. Sorry, that, that explanation sucked, but I think you guys kind of already get it from your notes.